Yeah. Well, welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. It's Barry the Hatchet time, and this is the first time we're going to do this live. And we've got Campbell Brown and Matthew Lloyd in the studio together. And uh, there's a big history. It goes back over 10 years. It goes back to pretty much 2004, the line in the sand game. But it even goes back before that, when Hawthorne and Essendon played in premierships and grand finals against each other, 83, 84 and 85. It's been a long-standing rivalry. And uh, Campbell, Lloyd, you're already here. Campbell, thanks for joining us. And no it goes back to 2004, the line in the sand game. Can you tell us some of the background of what happened in the line in the sand game? What happened at halftime? Yeah, it's been pretty well documented. Um, Dermot Burden came into the change rooms at, at half time and he was a little bit uh, upset with some of the things that had been going on out there. In the past, um, I think we'd lost eight or nine games in a row to Essendon and they'd pretty much you know, physically bullied us and, and uh, really were on top of us. And, and that day, he grabbed Richie Vandenberg, myself and, and a few of the guys and just said, today's the day that um, we, we make a stand. Um, it's been famously called the, the line in the sand game and um, we went out there after half time and we obviously didn't think it would explode the way that it did but there was, there was plenty of heat in, in the game and, uh, and things happened. You got reported for four weeks for hitting Jason Winderlick which Lloydie, you said at the time was the most despicable thing you've ever seen on a football field. Yeah, I was actually not involved in the, the all-in brawl. I, like Brownie, thought that it would, would just break up quite quickly so myself and Trent Crowe were standing at full forward and and I saw Windelick, who wouldn't have played too many games, running on the field, and Brownie was coming off the field, and I saw him um, land a big blow on uh, Jason's uh, face, which I uh, saw Jason you know, had his hands in his head, and I was just in total shock with what I'd just seen uh, Campbell do to a young player on that day. You've you got to remember, I was a young player too. It was only my third season of football, and I was coming off with the blood rule as well. I was running off to the interchange bench. I turned around just to see what was unfolding, Jason was coming off with a blood rule too, he had a, had a blood lip and uh, he was running off and we kind of chested each other and then I threw a punch uh, on the way through and um, it, it did connect and, um, and yeah, I was disappointed with the comments that, that Lordy made the next day because I thought it, it prejudiced the tribunal. Um, you know, there weren't, there weren't uh, too many people that actually saw the incident and uh, it, it wasn't caught on camera and so I, I thought for, you know, for, um, for a senior player to, to come out and say that before I'd gone to the tribunal um, certainly wasn't going to help my case at all. You're a bit of a fiery guy. What, what would have happened if uh, you had seen him after the game in the car park or, or that night out somewhere that night? Uh, no, no, nothing, nothing. At, at that stage, um, me and Lloyd here, I think we're, we're all good and, and that's kind of where, where it started to, to build from and um, yeah, it certainly went up a couple of levels after <laughs> that. Did you lose respect for each other after the comments were made at all? I, I certainly didn't. Um, I'm not sure how Lordy felt, but uh, yeah, he, he probably did. No, we didn't have a history before that. So as I said, it was a one-off incident that I didn't like. And uh, I, Brownie's right. Probably if I had my time again, I wouldn't speak. On, I think it was on the radio after the game, but it didn't take away how disappointed I was with that incident. Then we go to round three, 2005, and uh, a guy, some of you might remember, Josh Thurgood, Lloydie, you lined him up and you got him. And uh, the Hawthorne players took pretty good exception to this one also. Can you talk us through that? Uh, no malice in that at all, Brownie. I actually had a broken arm that I came back from, was wearing an arm guard and uh, slid in for the footy and made contact with Josh. I didn't get suspended for that, but it was just an unfortunate incident. Later on that year, it goes up another notch, 2005 at the end. Uh, you actually break Campbell's nose. Uh, is that true, you broke his nose? Well, I know that uh, Campbell here, we see in the goal square, that actually Campbell was running watching the football. and. Uh, it doesn't look too good there, Brownie, on my part, but I honestly <laughs> saw that as a reflex. So I remember the Hawthorne cheer squad were behind me and they, yeah, giving it to they were right giving out. it to me all day. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, the incident sparked after that when uh, Brownie saw his chance what's, to get one back at me. What's your thoughts mm. on that incident behind the play? Oh, yeah, I, like Lloyd said, I don't think he meant to do it. It was a reflex action. Um, and I was running facing Sully and I've mm. turned to, to go and the contact's been made. I actually didn't know who it was until a couple of the... Um, the Hawks cheer score were screaming out, it was Lloydy, it was Lloydy. And um, once I got that knowledge, um, I was just looking for an opportunity to, uh, to get one back. And um, th that came uh, not long after that, just uh, on half time. Uh, talk us through that incident, because you ended up getting four weeks for it, but uh, you certainly got him back. Yeah, well, it's a perfect time to do it uh, after the siren's gone, because they can't pay a free kick or uh, give away a goal or anything like that. And um, I think uh, someone was having a shot at goal and, and things escalated there. And, I made a bit of a beeline for, for Lloydie and I was trying to land a, a couple un, under, uh, under onto his chin there and um, 
yeah, I, I did end up getting four weeks. So they actually wanted to re report me four times, one for each strike. But uh, yeah, I ended up just getting reported for the one incident, but I got four weeks for, for striking. So at this stage, there's a fair bit of animosity between you two. Is it is it more a, a Lloyd and Campbell Brown thing, or is it now more a Essendon Hawthorne, or is it just going back to you two now? Uh, there's no doubt when I got to Essendon, I was told of the hatred of the Hawthorne Football Club. And, and we started to laugh at Hawthorne at, at that stage with the line in the sand game. A joke amongst Essendon players was who's lost to Hawthorne and, mm. and there's no doubt they took exception to that. Personally, I'd never had anything against Campbell. Obviously, he's right where it started with my comments after the game. But it's amazing just how things seem to evolve between yeah. Hawthorne and Essendon, myself and Campbell. But I never went out on the ground looking to have anything happen with Campbell. I think we both play the game hard and things just evolved. Do you like each other? Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with Lloyd. It's just one of those things. On, on a footy field, pretty passionate guys, and, and there's no doubt that that hatred um, for Essendon Hawthorne games is there. You, it's the first game you look at when the draw comes out, what round it is, and that week, the build up to it, and you know the history that's gone you know, before you, and um, it's just one of the great games that, that the clubs are involved in. And then we go forward to 2009 where, uh, and this was a famous game also, this is over a five year history now and Lloydie lines up Brad Sewell here and uh, whether you meant that Lloydie or not, he's out cold and the aftermath of that, you two blokes know really well there, Campbell you're getting in there, throwing a few Luke Hodges there, what do you say to him right here? Uh, no that wasn't actually to Lloydie, that was to a couple of the, uh, the Eston boys on the bench. And uh, Doc Bruce Reed, who's a very good friend of mine too, was there, so I give him a wink and a little bit of theatre in it as well. But um, yeah, there's no doubt that that was a disappointing um, you know, thing that happened to Sully. Obviously, got the, the three breaks in his um, eye socket, and um, I think the lead up to that was uh, we were all over Essendon at the time. It was round 22. Whoever won that game went on to play final, so there was a fair bit at stake. And um, I think Lloydie, uh, being the captain of the club, gone in at half time. Wasn't too happy with the way that the guys were playing and um, came up to the line just to make a bit of a statement after half time and impose himself physically. And um, there's no doubt that um, yeah, he wouldn't have run in there with the intention of, of doing that. Um, but that's the way it, it happened. And uh, yeah, naturally, we were pretty upset with it and went on to, to lose the game. And, uh, and yeah, we were knocked out for the, of the season. Do you just see red when a teammate of yours goes down like that? When you see Brad Sewell go down, do you just think, where's Lloyd? Where can I get him? Oh, that's probably one of the angriest I've ever been on the footy field. And, and all the boys too, you can see it was, it was instant. Everyone went straight for Lloydie at the time. And um, I was weighing up in, in my head, you got to understand as well, that uh, it's round 22. So if we win, and at the time we were 26 points up, we're going on to play finals. So I didn't want to do anything too silly and get rubbed out um, and obviously if we'd lost I'd be sitting out uh, the first three, four, five weeks of the next year too like I'm doing at the moment, it's no bloody good either so um, that's probably the reason why I didn't um, come a bit harder and uh, yeah. Lordy, why did you do it and what are you thinking directly after you do it, are you thinking per, uh, sa safety? Well I went into that game thinking if we lost well I've retired so pretty much once that incident happened I knew I, I was playing my last game of football and uh, I remember going in at half time, we were playing terribly, they didn't have Buddy Franklin, I don't think, uh, uh, I think maybe Roughhead was out as well and no doubt Sam Mitchell was getting a lot of taps behind, he was the one I was looking to lay a big bone crunching tackle on, the ball came our way, I went to hip and shoulder Brad Sewell so I don't take away from that but I understood if you hit the head you're going to be suspended so obviously my shoulder made contact with him, I knew he was in a bad way. But at that stage, I just had to protect myself. And I must admit, the game's clean through that period, but I feared for myself in that second half. I didn't know what... So you feared for yourself? I did. I didn't know what Hodgie, Jordan Lewis, Campbell Brown, uh, Alistair Clarkson after the game came towards me. Yeah, that's right. Um, I had what did he say to you? Uh, he said to me, uh, just pretty much called me a few names, under, uh, that I was weak, and, and he was disappointed. Max Bailey had done his knee that day as well. So. Did you I say anything back to Clarko? No, I didn't say anything, but uh, I got down to the rooms, I was having a shower and uh, one of the uh, administrators came up to me and said, you'll need some uh, assistance getting to your car because there's so many people waiting for you, whether it be Hawthorne officials, uh, whether it be players, whether it be supporters. So I had to get all escorted Security to my car. car. Yeah, and obviously uh, things transpired after that. And obviously you remember his comments after the game, uh, years, years back after that, then after the game you had these comments to say? 
Mate, we're not going to forget in a hurry what Matty Lloyd did and, uh, you know, I hope he plays on next year. Matty Lloyd, he's done that a fair few times to us and uh, he, I think he's uh, one of the biggest snipers in the game, so um, his time's coming. One of the biggest <laughs> snipers in the game. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of when you look back at those? Obviously, the emotion and the passion in yeah. you, we see it day to day when you play footy, but do you look back now and think, maybe I shouldn't have said that or I'm, I'm happy I stand by that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I like to say what I think at the time and, um, you know, we've gone through the, what, what's happened and over the last four or five years. The third good thing um, we weren't really happy at, um, the, the great thing about Lloyd is when he goes for a contest, he goes hard and, and he, he, you know, if he can't um, win the contest, he certainly goes to hurt and I think that's a fantastic part of the game. Um, so he's very good at picking blokes off and... Uh, <laughs> And, you know, there's been plenty of players that have done that over the years. And so, you know, people call me a sniper. Um, I'm not sure what the exact definition is, but uh, he certainly, you know, when he hit a body, he, he hit to hurt. And, um, yeah, so I made those comments. And but it seems like you've both got a healthy respect for the way each other played. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've got nothing but respect for, for Lloydie. And uh, he's a champion of the game. And, um, you know, it was a great rivalry there. And, uh, and, yeah, it's just it was one of those things that, you know, we're sitting here today as... Uh, a retired player and someone almost retired will probably be talking about this for <laughs> a long time, you know. And that's what Brownie made it great, playing for Essendon and also playing for big clubs because you have those rivalries in front of big crowds. Uh, obviously, uh, to me, sniping is punching someone from behind, so I never saw it that way. But obviously, Brownie's interpretation of that is just going hard. And if you hurt someone, you hurt someone, which yeah. I understand that. So, But I had more, more worries on my mind at that stage with, uh, as I said, Fearing for uh, what life. Was, I actually had the uh, sun visors down driving home and there's no sun <laughs> because I didn't mind any Hawthorne support. I reckon if it was a regular yeah. season game and not round 22, yeah. you would have smacked him. Oh, the boys would have been lining up. Yeah, yeah to be honest. And but it was we're in a pretty <laughs> unfortunate situation <laughs> that we were in front at the time. Yeah. And uh, we already had a few guys out, like Lloydie said, with Buddy and Ruffy and these guys. And and you play all year to play in the final. Um, you didn't want to do anything too silly, but I think Chance Bateman yeah, I did, did get and you. he knocked me out. I was out, knocked out for about three or four seconds, um, not long after. Big round arm from Bateman. Mm. You got a um, week or two. Yeah, week so. or two. So anyway, it was uh, a game that you look back on. It, the worst thing to come out of was the injuries to Brad Sewell, but. It's one of those famous moments that people will never forget between us and Hawthorne. Oh, boys, it was a fantastic insight into personally your lives in the footy sense of it and also Hawthorne Essendon. Thanks for joining us today. Are no, we going to hug it out, mate? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Lordy, why did you do it? And what are you thinking directly after you do it? Are you thinking per, uh, safe, safety? Well, I went into that game thinking if we lost, well, I'd retired. So pretty much once that incident happened, I knew I, I was playing my last game of football. And uh, I remember going in at half time, we were playing terribly. They didn't have mm. Buddy Franklin. I don't think, uh, uh, I think maybe Roughhead was out as well. And no doubt, Sam Mitchell was getting a lot of taps behind. He was the one I was looking to lay a big bone crunching tackle on. The ball came our way. I went to hip and shoulder Brad Sewell, so I don't take away from that. But I understood if you hit the head, you're going to be suspended. So obviously my shoulder made contact with him. I knew he was in a bad way. But at that stage, I just had to protect myself. And I must admit, the game's clean through that period. But I feared for myself in that second half. I didn't know what... So you feared for yourself? I did. I didn't know what Hodgie, Jordan Lewis, Campbell Brown, uh, Alistair Clarkson after the game came towards me. Yeah, that's right. um, I had what did he say to you? Uh, he said to me, uh, just pretty much called me a few names under, uh, that I was weak and, and he was disappointed. Max Bailey had done his knee that day as well. So did you I'd, say anything back to Clarko? No, I didn't say anything. But uh, I got down to the rooms. I was having a shower and uh, one of the uh, administrators came up to me and said, you'll need some uh, assistance getting to your car because there's so many people waiting for you, whether it be Hawthorne officials, uh, whether it be players, whether it be supporters. So I had to get all escorted Security to my car. car. Yeah, and obviously uh, things transpired after that. And obviously you remembered his comments after the game, uh, years, years back after that. Then after the game you had these comments to say? Mate, we're not going to forget in a hurry what Matty Lloyd did and, uh, you know, I hope he plays on next year. Matty Lloyd, he's done that a fair few times to us and uh, he, I think he's uh, one of the biggest snipers in the game, so um, his time's coming. One of the <laughs> biggest snipers in the game. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of when you look back at those Obviously the emotion and the passion in yeah. you. Yeah, had a blood lip and uh, he was running off and we kind of chested each other and then I threw a punch uh, on the way through and um, it, it did connect and... Um, and yeah, I was disappointed with the comments that, that Lloydie made the next day because I thought it, it prejudiced the tribunal. Um, you know, there weren't there weren't uh, too many people that actually saw the incident, and uh, it, it wasn't caught on camera. And so I, I thought for you know for um, for a senior player to, to come out and say that before I'd gone to the tribunal um, certainly wasn't going to help my case at all. You're a bit of a fiery guy. What what would have happened if uh, you had seen him after the game in the car park or, or that night out somewhere that night? Uh, no, no, nothing, nothing. At, at that stage, um, me and Lloydie, I think we're, we're all good, and, and that's kind of where it, where it started to, to build from. And um, yeah, it certainly went up a couple of levels after that. <laughs> Did you lose respect for each other after the comments were made at all? I, I certainly didn't. Um, I, I'm not sure how Lloydie felt, but uh, yeah, he, he probably did. No, we didn't have a history before that. So as I said, it was a one-off incident that I didn't like. And uh, I, Brownie's right. Probably if I had my time again, I wouldn't speak. On, I think it was on the radio after the game, but it didn't take away how disappointed I was with that incident. Then we go to round three, 2005, and uh, a guy, some of you might remember, Josh Thurgood, Lloydie, you lined him up and you got him, and uh, the Hawthorne players took pretty good exception to this one also. Can you talk us through that? Uh, no malice in that at all, Branny. I actually had a broken arm that I came back from, was wearing an arm guard, and... Uh, slid in for the footy and made contact with Josh. I didn't get suspended for that, but it was just an unfortunate incident. Later on that year, it goes up another notch, 2005 at the end. Uh, you actually break Campbell's nose. Uh, is that true? You broke his nose? Well, I know that uh, Campbell here, we see in the goal square, that actually Campbell was running watching the football. And uh, it doesn't look too good there, Brownie, on my part. But <laughs> I honestly saw that as a reflex. So I remember the Hawthorne cheer squad were behind me and they, yeah, giving it to they me, were giving right? it to me all day. And, uh, you know, obviously... Uh, and that week, the build-up to it, and you know the history that's gone you know, before you, and um, it's just one of the great games that, that the clubs are involved in. And then we go forward to 2009, where, uh, and this was a famous game also. This is over a five-year history now, and Lloydie lines up Brad Sewell here. And uh, whether you meant that, Lloydie, or not, he's out cold, and the aftermath of that, you two blokes know really well. There, Campbell, you're getting in there, throwing a few Luke Hodges there. What do you say to him right here? Uh, no, that wasn't actually to Lloydie, that was to a couple of the, uh, the Eston boys on the bench. And uh, Doc Bruce Reid, who's a very good friend of mine too, was there, so I give him a wink. And there's a little bit of theatre in it as well, but um, yeah, there's no doubt that that was a disappointing um, you know, thing that happened to Suley. Obviously got the, the three breaks in his um, eye socket, and um, I think the lead up to that was uh, we were all over Eston at the time. It was round 22, whoever won that game went on to play finals, so there was a fair bit at stake. and. Um, 
I think Lloydy, uh, being the captain of the club, gone in at half time, wasn't too happy with the way that the guys were playing and um, came up to the line just to make a bit of a statement after half time and impose himself physically. And um, there's no doubt that um, yeah, he wouldn't have run in there with the intention of, of doing that. Um, but that's the way it, it happened, and uh, yeah, naturally we were pretty upset with it and went on to, to lose the game. And, uh, and yeah, we were knocked out for the, of the season. Do you just see red when a teammate of yours goes down like that? When you see Brad Sewell go down, do you just think, where's Lloyd? Where can I get him? Oh, that's probably one of the angriest I've ever been on the footy field, and, and all the boys too. You can see it was, it was instant. Everyone went straight for Lloydy at the time. And, um, I was weighing up in, in my head, you've got to understand as well, that uh, it's round 22, so if we win, and at the time we were 26 points up, we're going on to play finals. So I didn't want to do anything too silly and get rubbed out. Um, and obviously if we'd lost, I'd be sitting out you know, the first three, four, five weeks of the next year too, like I'm doing at the moment. It's nobody. Uh, the incident sparked after that when uh, Brownie saw his chance what's, to get one back at me. What's your thoughts mm. on that incident behind the play? Oh, uh, yeah. I, like Lloyd said, I don't think he meant to do it. It was a reflex action. Um, and I was running, facing Sewell, and I've turned to, to go, and the contact's been made. I actually didn't know who it was until a couple of the, um, the Hawks cheer scores were screaming out, it was Lloyd, it was Lloyd. And um, once I got that knowledge, um, I was just looking for an opportunity to, uh, to get one back. And you got um, it. Th that came uh, not long after that, just uh, on half time. Uh, talk us through that incident, because you ended up getting four weeks for it, but uh, you certainly got him back. Yeah, well, it's a perfect time to do it uh, after the siren's gone because they can't pay a free kick or uh, give away a goal or anything like that. And um, I think uh, someone was having a shot at goal and, and things escalated there. And I made a bit of a beeline for, for Lloydy and I was trying to land a, a couple un, under, uh, under onto his chin there. And um, yeah, I, I did end up getting four weeks. So they actually wanted to re report me four times, one for each strike. But uh, yeah, I ended up just getting reported for the one incident, but I got four weeks for, for striking. So at this stage, there's a fair bit of animosity between you two. Is it is it more a, a Lloyd and Campbell Brown thing, or is it now more a Essendon Hawthorne, or is it just going back to you two now? Uh, there's no doubt when I got to Essendon, I was told of the hatred of the Hawthorne Football Club, and, and we started to laugh at Hawthorne at, at that stage with the line in the sand game. A joke amongst Essendon players was who's lost to Hawthorne and, mm. and there's no doubt they took exception to that. Personally, I'd never had anything against Campbell. Obviously, he's right where it started with my comments after the game, but it's amazing just how things seem to evolve between yeah. Hawthorne and Essendon, myself and Campbell, but I never went out on the ground looking to have anything happen with Campbell. I think we both play the game hard and things just evolved. Do you like each other? Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with Lloyd. It's just one of those things. On, on a footy field, pretty passionate guys, and, and there's no doubt that that hatred um, for Essendon Hawthorne games is there. You, it's the first game you look at when the draw comes out, what round it is.